<coughs> thank you chairpersons the subject of glp 1ra was well introduced by a case report from dr bansi sabu in a previous talk if you remember those three keywords what he narrated one was a glimmy pride withdrawal second was a lifestyle change which resulted into a 15 kg weight loss but the trigger point was introduction of glp1 receptor agonist it is not captured in the glp1 ra trial or in the real world data that the drug could induce 10 15 kg weight loss <clears throat> but the success of going off treatment remission in diabetes all could be achieved simply with a change in the diet change in the appetite and an excess eating was eliminated so how appetite modulation and a weight management would change the diabetes at last idea there was an excellent debate regarding weight is an important target versus glycemic target so probably we are moving in the direction of addressing obesity nafld and the weight in a diabetic patient which would change the outcome so with this i am a speaker and advisor for couple of companies quite few this is a cipla sponsored as you can see on this so uh, i am an advisor and a speaker for cipla and lily and in our practice over last 5 or 10 years we have shifted from glucose centric to cardio centric or a vascular centric this had been a movement and a strategy and a guideline and everything had been happening over a decades couple of decades there is nothing much to say it's a well known fact that why diabetics are at higher risk but we if we have a drugs since after emparex cv outcome trial we have learned that a trial or a drug which results into improvement in multiple cv risk factor probably we would have better outcome in diabetic people so what interventions would benefit type 2 diabetic patients if we have to have an algorithm for how should we be managing i have always given very high attention to people who do not achieve glycemic control from uk pds i know that 1% a1c reduction would reduce mi risk by 16% severe risk and glycemic control is poorly linked and i thought that all such uncontrolled diabetics in my clinic i should offer them a good high intensity statin a good ldl target and a good anti hypertensive program so that is equally important so you need a drug which addresses more than glycemic control this was well proven long back from a steno denmark center that a multifactorial intervention and mind you this participant number was not great peter gaid and we have interacted many times and he said we never achieved a1c of 6.5 or 7 most patients over 10 20 years achieved consistent 7.5 only thing all the drugs which were given to them included even antiplatelet and the drug used for glycemic control was glycolazide so comprehensive management was very important at that time sglt2 i and glp1 ra was not available so how do we offer a comprehensive management so we come to the so called uh, a subject of glp1 receptor agonist try to focus on the left side we know the action of incretin axis on pancreas and liver is quite well known but the most important critical benefit of controlling ppg with glp1 ra more than a dpp4 is an effect on a gastric emptying time it's not the glucose induced pancreatic insulin secretion which controls ppg but it is the gastric emptying effect which is not there with dpp4 inhibitor the other two effects on appetite center in the brain and on adipose tissue now there is a great science and a great chapters written on adiposopathy or a dysfunctional adipose tissue so we have learned adipose kinds and the impact of adipo kinds on the behavior of future behavior of cardiovascular disease is quite well known probably by reducing weight and changing adipose tissue abnormalities we achieve something better with sglt2 i and glp1 ra and if we look at on the right side of a slide you have a multiple pathways through which glp1 receptor agonist will have an impact 
on a atherosclerotic plaque and a plaque in progression. If you see the benefit of SGLT2 inhibitor is not in reducing myocardial infarction. The great benefit was obtained in people who have heart failure or people who would die due to cardiovascular disease. But the impact on MI was seen more with GLP-1 receptor agonist. And a combination of two would obviously make the best partner to go ahead. And that's how ADA and AAC all along have given a higher importance to drugs which result into a weight loss. And that's how they are in the top priority. Presence of one additional CV risk factor, like LDL or hypertension, increases the risk of diabetic people and automatically presence of ASCVD risk factor would result in selecting a drug which would modify. So automatically metformin, SGLT2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist would come into selecting the fourth would be pioglitazone. If you remain within these four drugs for longer period of time, you don't need sulfonylurea and insulin, you are better, the patient's outcome would be better. Still till 22, in last 10 years, it is consistently written the first injectable has to be GLP-1-RA. And many drugs have been compared with glargine as the first drug. And they have shown to be equipotent, equi-effective without hypo and with weight loss. So it's a better drug. But now I'm going to focus in next 10 minutes on dulaglutide, which is once a week GLP-1 receptor agonist and how much A1C reduction you would expect. An all oral agent will give you not more than 1% HbA1c reduction. Only in GLP-1 receptor agonists, right from Lira to Sema, you will find on an average 1.5. Real world data, if you look at on any drug, could be as low as 0.5%, similar to DPP-4. On the upper side, you may find up to 2%. We still have to wait for tirzepatide, which is dual GLP-1-RA, which is shown to reduce 18 kg weight loss and 2.7% A1C. But that is a couple of years for India. It's already launched in US. This is a comparison between two GLP-1-RA on the left, Dula versus Liraglutide, both injectable, 1.4% A1C. In the middle, you find dulaglutide with glargine insulin, both once a day kind of therapy, injectable versus once a week. On the right, you have multiple basal bolus injectable therapy in presence of Lispro and glargine arm being compared. And in all three different patient profile, therapy profile, disease profile, phenotype profile, you will find that dulaglutide here has shown on an average 1.4% A1C reduction. If we talk about the weight loss benefit, there are a couple of trials, three trials put up here. Right extreme is on the renal disease patient and you find just a three kg. And this is what you will find in all the trials except recent SEMA is showing probably a five kg weight loss. But that's on this side of a wall, exactly at this time, there is a GLP-1 RA, but there you will have to listen 40 minutes. Here in 20 minutes, you will learn the similar aspect of GLP-1 RA. It's not only how much weight is lost. It's a visceral fat. And that's more important. How much fat one would lose from liver? What percentage is needed? I'm, I'm sure that Dr. Mittal highlighted about NAFLD and a hepatic fat loss with GLP-1 receptor agonist. But this is equally important that dulaglutide also would result into reduction of hepatic fat. And this is usually associated with reduction in epicardial fat, which is also a so-called a marker and pathology for creating a cardiovascular disease. Now comparing the most important aspect of CV outcome trials, we got the leader trial first on GLP-1, quite long back. And we were not so impressed because we were impressed by MPAREG outcome findings and that anything into 30% reduction and risk reduction 30, 40 sounds larger. So we tend to neglect 12 or 15% of risk reduction, but the endpoints were different here. Now comparing different GLP-1 RA in a different trial, 
Of course, we can't easily compare. They happen at different time, different patient population. But the most important, what you see on rewind, which is circled there, is 70% of participants were primary prevention. Absence of cardiovascular disease when they were enrolled in the trial. MPAR-REG was 100% patient with past CVD. While a leader has 72% with a past CVD. That becomes a secondary prevention trial. This has 70% people with without CVD. So this is a low risk population in rewind trial. That's why it makes more attractive. And if this is, if you see the duration of follow-up, everywhere it is two to three years. In rewind, you have five and a half years. So it's a long-term follow-up trial which has shown benefit as you can see here, there are only four agents so far out of all GLP-1 which has shown benefit. But only two are available in India, liraglutide and semaglutide. And you will find 12% risk reduction with primary three-point maze, which is a non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, which are very, very important, which is not being addressed. If you look at... DAPA declared TIMI also has similar 12% primary prevention. So declared TIMI or MPAREG, all of them have between 12 and 14% reduction in MI or a non-fatal stroke. So in terms of primary three points MACE, they are all identical. Only in heart failure, the drugs are different. So this is primary prevention compared to placebo. And this is secondary prevention. Now, if you look at closely these two points in the lower part, history of CVD and no history of CVD. So in two different subset of this 70% and 30%, the benefit is identical. So it doesn't matter whether past history or is there or not. If I show you here a Pioneer 6, you do not have any kind of a benefit there. Only in sustain, which is an injectable semaglutide, you have a three points benefit. But we don't have injectable semaglutide. We have currently no data of CV benefit with oral semaglutide. The trial is currently on and we'll have to wait a couple of years to get the findings. Now there is a small benefit in systolic blood pressure with dulaglutide and a small change in LDL. We do not know how much this has a contribution, but you don't have to worry about any change in heart rate, blood pressure, or LDL. Now, if you look at the microvascular complication, what was an impact in the Rewind trial? This is, again, in comparison to placebo. There is a benefit in diabetic retinopathy and diabetic nephropathy, as assessed by number of patients needing a lesser photocoagulation, NTVEGF injectable therapy, or vitrectomy. Or a fall in GFR, change in GFR, or a change in albumin excretion rate. The next is a adverse events of interest. Again, no difference against placebo. No increase in hypoglycemia. We know that GLP-1-RA doesn't increase hypoglycemia. So finally, the only side effects about which all of us are worried, every time when we initiate the patient, people do come back with GI side effect. Nausea can be as high as 20%. 10% might vomit. And all these people need to be counseled. And during first month, the side effects is maximum. They should be advised to eat slow, smaller meals, remain hydrated. I would always prescribe the two, both the types of antiemetics, whichever workout. And if people can sustain little side effect, loss of appetite, feeling sad about food, couple of months past, probably they will continue to eat and continue to manage that way and take injectable therapy continuously. And then you will see what Dr. Bansi Sabu showed that a patient could. So we all have similar kind of a patient. Patient loses 5, 10 kg weight. Patient looks at a flat sugar chart on the... CGM gets more motivated to follow the lifestyle, 
and then the more weight loss would happen. Now, if you look at the ease of injection in comparison to liraglutide pen, I am sure those who have used, those who have seen, have no doubt about the pen what uh, Lily had produced for dulaglutide. Non-visible needle, nothing much to do, extra sophistication. This is June 22, a real world data on comparison between dulaglutide and oral semaglutide. So people preferred to take dulaglutide and not oral semaglutide. This is what is unlike what we would expect. Of course, this is an American population where a huge number of people are currently on dulaglutide, but a propensity score matched population, six and a half thousand people. This is pharmacy-based data. And the larger number discontinued oral semaglutide, but they preferred injectable, semag uh, injectable dulaglutide. So probably Trulicity had an impact. People were very comfortable. Our patients also find that once a week is no big hassle and many of them do not wish to change. So finally, if your patient is inadequately controlled on multiple oral agent, blood glucose is higher than 8%, there is cardiovascular risk and weight gain is an issue or obesity is always an issue. GLP-1 RA or a weekly dulaglutide is a solution. And this probably will offer you multiple additional benefit to qualify for multifactorial approach. With this, I would stop here. And Dr. Badlani, we are taking at the end after Amit yes. Saraf or ah, together, in the, as in you the, wish. In the end, sir. OK. He is talking on metformin. Ah, yes. But we can combine two agents. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.